Welcome to this presentation of the Battle of Megiddo. It is the first battle to have been recorded in what is accepted as relatively reliable detail. Megiddo is also the first recorded use of the composite bow and the first body count. All details of the battle come from Egyptian sources, primarily the hieroglyphic writings on the walls at the Temple of Karnak. Okay, so let's get started. Here's the basic overview of what we're going to be covering. The who, where, when, why, what. So, the who is the Egyptian army under the command of Pharaoh Thutmose III versus the Canaanite army. Uh, the where is going to be the city of Megiddo, which is in present-day Israel. And it took place approximately 1457 B.C. There's some debate on the date on that. Why? The Canaanites had rebelled against their Egyptian overlords. Uh, basically, every time that there's a pharaoh who comes to power, some of the uh, minor kingships kind of revolt to see if they can uh, gain their independence. And this wasn't the first time, and it happened several times, pretty much every time that there was a, a new king, a new pharaoh, uh, the rebels be a rebel uprising. Some of the reasons why it's important is because Thutmose III was a really uh, smart tactician and caught the Canaanites off guard. It's also setting up after the victory, the Egyptians win, spoilers, after they win, they, it pretty much sets them up to, to dominate the region for many, many years. I wanted to show this image. This is a depiction uh, at the Temple of Karnak. This is how we know what we know. Thutmose the third is on the left, right here, and he's shown conquering his Canaanite enemies, right here. Here's a map of the region we're talking about. The extent of the Egyptian empire. Megiddo, the city, is located right here. Here's an image of Megiddo today. You can get a sense of its strategic value, because it's on top of this tall hilltop. Uh, you could see 360 in every direction, so anybody who wanted to invade, you'd have uh, ample notice. But it didn't always look like this. Originally it would have looked more like this. Bustling town. You can notice here the uh, large gate area, which any uh, invading army would have had to travel up. Um, and there are two gatehouses. There's one right here, one right here. Uh, so it was a very uh, defensible position. So this guy comes to power. This is uh, Th Thutmose III. And he hears about the rebel uprising and wants to squash it immediately. So he has a council with his generals. They kind of look like these guys. And they're talking it over, trying to decide what to do. And there are three, three main roads to Megiddo to take. If you look at this map, here's the three main roads. I'm going to highlight them in red. There's the northern route, there's the southern route, and then there's the Aruna Pass. Now, as you can see, they took the Aruna Pass, um, but these two, the north and south route, are considered safer, uh, less treacherous, uh, and they're wider roads. So the generals over here were recommending to take either the north or the south route, most, mostly the south route, but Thutmose knew that they'd be expecting that, so he took the risk of traveling this middle path here, which was much narrower, so if the Canaanites uh, found out that they were going to go this route, uh, they could easily be ambushed and picked off. So um, 
he wanted to mobilize his troops quickly. And you can see here, the Canaanites had the south route and the north route scouted. So they knew, you know, if they were going to come down that way, that they'd have a head start to get ready. So let's take a look at the battle. Here's a map of the terrain that we're going to be dealing with. Here's our small Canaanite force waiting for uh, the Egyptians to show up. And here they come. As they move in, our scouting force flee back to the city. Now might be a good time to show what the Egyptian forces look like. Here's your standard infantry soldier. They usually carried a sickle sword, which was called a kopesh. Uh, the hook would be used to pull enemy's shield down before the uh, sword was lunged forward, stabbing the face, neck, or chest. Here's a spearman. And they wore scale armor uh, or leather tunics uh, with metal scales sewn on them. Uh, it was the first time that they were used. There are also Medjay fighters. These are Nubians who were known as a elite paramilitary police force. And the last group, and probably the most important because they uh, made it possible for the Egyptians to dominate militarily, were the chariot fighters. Most of the Egyptian enemies didn't have chariots at all, and uh, they were able to move fast and pretty much take down enemies really uh, effectively. Okay, so now back to the battle. Instead of launching a pursuit, Thutmose deploys his forces in a defensive posture across the Quinnebrook in an arc formation on high ground. Surprised and disorganized, the Canaanites deploy an opposing position to the Egyptians. Here's a picture of the Canaanite archer. Both armies reach battle positions in the dark, with only the light from the new moon. The Egyptians viewed it as a good omen, as Thutmose's family were favored by the moon goddess. Following morning, Thutmose orders an advance. The Canaanites, never well organized, are flung into confusion by their commanders and are unable to fight back effectively. The Canaanites are routed and flee back to the city. Seizing the opportunity, Thutmose orders a pursuit. But the men abandon the chase to loot the Canaanite camp, allowing them to barely escape. The inhabitants close the city gates prematurely, forcing some of the fleeing troops to be lifted over the walls with ropes made from clothing. Failing to capture the city outright, Thutmose orders the construction of a wooden wall around the city with a gate to allow those who wish to surrender to exit the siege.
With the city secured, Thutmose campaigned in the region for seven months, leaving a segment of his force to watch Megiddo. After a number of successes, he returned and took the city's surrender. Thutmose, in an act of mercy, spared Megiddo's defenders and was rewarded with oaths of loyalty from the rebels. The region was once again secured by the Egyptian authority. Megiddo is regarded as Thutmose III's first campaign, in which he would lead no less than 17 as pharaoh. And this concludes this presentation on Megiddo. Thank you for watching.